This video is brought to you by Musicvine. For beautifully produced music for film and video, click the link in the video description. In this video, I'm going to tackle five things that I learned about the infamous YouTube algorithm that keeps us watching more and more videos to satisfy our constant craving for dopamine. They feed us personalized content and track our engagement. It's a reality that algorithms have a big impact on our attention and behavior. As creators, we want our content to be seen. And there's a lot more to it than just making something good. Everything I post here is what I believe to be the ultimate truth, based on zero data other than stuff I learned about pushing out videos for the last couple of years and see them succeed or fail. I find the click-through rate to be one of the most powerful indicators for designing thumbnails and experimenting with different video titles. Any given YouTube page has valuable real estate to recommend more content to watch and the algorithm will favor a video with a high click-through rate. If 100 people see your thumbnail in their feed and only 2 click on it, that click-through rate is 2%, which is low. This measure is available in the new analytics for each of your videos. Often, a great video will not succeed if the thumbnail or title doesn't want to make you click. My interview with him about cutting the movie Arrival. For example, I have a good video about editing lessons, but the initial thumbnail left viewers cold. I experimented and changed it to this. That ultimately led to the algorithm sharing the video more broadly and ending up giving me 280,000 views. Yes, celebrity, pretty faces and big eyes make an impact on the clickability of a thumbnail. But I find there's more going on. It's about creating an intriguing connection between the visual, the title and the content. I learned that thumbnail and video title need to create some suspense, some tension, something interesting, a question that requires an answer for the audience. You know, the magnetic timeline. This video about the trackless editing software Final Cut Pro 10 was losing steam. But once I changed the thumbnail to visually play with the idea of going off track, the click-through rate doubled, which re-triggered the algorithm and gave me over 100,000 views in the first two months. But it's not just about eye-catching thumbnails. Ultimately, the video title is just as important. Here, I kept the same thumbnail but tested different video titles and eventually scored. Views went from around 100 per day to far beyond 1,000 as the algorithm responded to better audience engagement and sharing the video more broadly. Since I made this video, there has actually been a new development with a click-through rate. It's now real time. It started off with 7.4, really high, so that tells me. And at the end of this video, I'll show you a live demo of how I immediately see the effect in the algorithm. If the title promises something amazing, but the content doesn't deliver, it's usually considered clickbait, which results in people thumbing down the video, clicking off, and the algorithm taking note, sending it to the YouTube graveyard. That's where the audience retention rate can really help identify problems with the actual content. Audience retention is an overall measure of how well your video keeps its audience. It gives you a curve that tracks the attention at any given moment and an average view duration. If the rate is low, it usually is an indication that people do not care about your video. And that's where this average view duration comes in and it has to be above 50 to 60% average view duration. Despite many claiming that the goalposts of average retention should be somewhere north of 60%, I find that that is no guarantee for success. I have videos with retention rates as low as 36 go absolutely gangbusters. And videos with high retentions of 70% completely fail. But here's the trick, and this is the most important thing you should take away from my findings. You can absolutely make use of the retention rate to save a video and turn a flop into an algorithm hit. And we also decided it's very important to see David and Margot's faces as they interact with each other. This is what happened to my recent video about the movie Searching. Initially, this 21-minute video tapped out at 25,000 views, which compared to similar content on my channel was very disappointing. I tried different thumbnails and titles, but the video never found traction. Even though I got the click-through rate to get as high as 10%, a look at the retention rate curve showed some weaknesses. Clearly, you can see the segments where there's a drop-off in viewer interest. And this gave me an idea for an experiment. Why not remove all the parts with low retention? 
I ended up cutting down the video to 15 minutes and released a new version that focused only on the parts with higher attention. Boom. This new video was clearly received more positively by the audience and that triggered the YouTube algorithm to share it more broadly. The second version came in at 130,000 views, which is a 500% increase. So, while retention in its own is no indication for failure or success, it does give you some clues to maybe rework a video that you've already slaved over and give it a second chance. You know, we're just kind of dropping the best takes in there. YouTube will have you believe that they don't discriminate against demonetized videos, but I truly believe that that's a half lie. Monetization matters. Each razor has stainless steel blades and out Businesses pay YouTube for advertising and YouTube in turn shares part of that revenue with us, the video owner. We both have a monetary incentive for the video to do well. While it may be true that the search function purely ranks videos by relevance, I don't think that applies to how YouTube shares videos anywhere else. Like on the home page, the trending page and the recommendation sidebar. This is where I am. When my video, what it takes to edit a big TV show, dropped off in views, I added another ad in the first four minutes of the video. I went from a few thousand views to 460,000 views. The CPM, the cost per thousand views, might vary from niche to niche. For the filmmaking genre on YouTube, I find that anything above 10 bucks per thousand views seems to be favored by the algorithm. Now, for my video, as soon as the CPM dropped below 10 bucks, views slowed down. Once I added the additional ad, the CPM jumped back up, created more revenue per thousand views, and the algorithm kicked back in. Views started to skyrocket. Cussing cuts down on ad dollars. I mean, look at this shit. This fucking logo looks expensive as fuck. Christian, a fellow YouTuber who has a channel about fashion advice, once told me that he used to cuss and swear in his videos. Coincidentally, he didn't use profanity in one of his videos and suddenly his views Jonah Hill style, it's very simple, minimal. Since then, he found all kinds of creative ways to avoid saying Fuck that, you know? And now he's raking in six figures on YouTube. Sweet niblets. Gosh darn it. Gosh dang it. Damn. YouTube itself put out a video describing exactly what their foul mouth policy is. Those are the type of words where you want to keep them out of the title. You want to keep them out of the thumbnail and you want to avoid using repeatedly at the beginning of the video. Okay. What the fuck? What the what? So keep your titles clean and at the very least don't swear in the first minute of your video. <laughs> Bleeping is, is great. You're safe to monetize. Creators often feel pressure to upload more and more videos in order to stay on the infamous YouTube treadmill. They're afraid that if they take a break, they lose their audience and fall out of favor with the algorithm. At the beginning, I too uploaded several times a week, then weekly, then only twice a month. Now I have no schedule. I find this pressure to constantly upload to be overrated. Yes, early on it's good to do a lot of videos to build up your craft and figure out what works. But quality trumps consistency. And I find that whenever I uploaded a good video, the algorithm is right there to push it out to all my subscribers and even more so to non-subscribers. Oh, quality drives traffic in the so-called snowball effect where one good video helps the view velocity of the next video still works even if there's weeks between the release dates. At this stage I completely disregard the treadmill and purely focus on making videos that keep me excited and hopefully the audience as well. It's a huge visual effects film. Before I show you the new real-time click-through rate and how I triggered the algorithm within the first day of my recent video, I want to take a brief moment to thank my long-term brand partner, Musicvine. They just launched a brand new subscription program providing filmmakers with unlimited access to their acclaimed catalog of music tracks. The pro plans starting at $19.99 are for filmmakers, freelancers and production agencies. The creator plan starting at $13.99 are specifically tailored for YouTubers, personal social media and other creator platforms. Now, to celebrate this launch, Musicvine are giving away pro filmmaking kits, including a DJI Mavic 2 Pro drone 
two DJI Ronin S gimbals and three Zoom H5 audio recorders. To enter, simply sign up to any Musicvine subscription plan before December 12th and tick the box Enter Price Draw at the checkout. Back to my latest video and what happened in the first hours of the launch. Since I started doing this video, there have been actually some updates on the way that YouTube measures data. It's a lot more real time and it's great. It really empowers you even more so to be able to immediately see if your thumbnail, your title is working, if your video is good quality. Let me show you what's going on. Just uh, four hours ago, I launched a new video. It's currently ranking number three out of 10. It started off going really gangbuster in the first hour, so it was number one, but it lost a little steam. That could potentially be the video, the click-through rate. It could be that it's maybe a Tuesday. Usually I launch my videos on a Saturday because they tend to be long. This is a long video, it's 17 minutes long. A lot of people are at work right now, it's 12.56 p.m. They might not have time to watch the video, but let's take a look at it. So as you can see, it's got about 3,000 views in the four hours. That's up 30% from what my average is. View duration is looking really good, 70% higher than what it usually is. And if you look at watch time, 120% up compared to my average. Really cool. Let's go to the analytics. So this is something that's really amazing right now. This data is now coming in real time. You can see how it really went up, was my number one video, and now it's kind of slowing down. And let's find out what the reason is. Let's look at reach. This is how many impressions we got so far. There's a 5.5% impression click-through rate. It started off with 7.4, really high. So that tells me all the subscribers, my loyal fans that were online, that watched for my stuff, clicked on it. And then it dropped off a little bit. So these might be less loyal subscribers. They need a little bit more encouragement to click on it. And it's going down even more. That last number here is very volatile. A half hour ago, it was actually at 14% up here. So I don't necessarily feel like you need to immediately panic and change your thumbnail because of this low number. But if it keeps staying under 5%, I would definitely consider changing the thumbnail out or the title of the video, editing a VFX intense Netflix film. My experience in my market, above 5%. If you can be around 7, 9%, that's really gonna help your video. We can look at the real-time views as well. Last 60 minutes, 331. Like this is quite a drop off. If it just keeps falling more like a rock, then I know something is off and I need to intervene. But yeah, it's pretty exciting to have that kind of data available in the first few hours because this is where it matters the most that you act and change a thumbnail or a title. So within the first 12 to 24 hours, I knew I had a problem here and clearly it was the click-through rate. The good news is because of the real-time data, now I could fix it within the first day instead of waiting one to two days to be able to assess and then make changes. And then you would have to wait again a day or two before you could make the next change. I've been tweaking for a while and I finally was able to find a thumbnail that works, I think. Once I implemented that change, which I did right here at 12 p.m., I could see a spike in the traffic immediately. So the combination of the thumbnail and the title seems to be hitting it off right now. And having that new peak here is very promising because it's, it indicates that there's new life in this video and hopefully it's going to keep going like this. But it does show you that playing with these metrics and using that data to figure out how people actually respond to this stuff is really, really helpful. Not so that we as the creators can game the system, but we can really make sure that we're optimizing the title and the thumbnail. Because most of the time what I'm facing is I have a good video. I feel like people would watch it if they would only click on it. So on day one when I recorded this, 
this video had just 8,000 views. Now, three weeks later, it has over 175,000 views and it's become my most successful video of the year. Then he goes around and he attacks him from the other side. There's one more algorithm hack that I discovered by accident, but I'm gonna release it as a bonus video over on Patreon, as this falls more on the side of gaming the system a little bit. And I wanna keep it somewhat under wraps. So if you love this channel, consider joining me on Patreon and you'll get exclusive access to this bonus story, plus hundreds of behind the scenes videos some free plugins, merch, and more. Thanks for watching. Oh, tired of